start with what are the main areas of the profession. The actuarial profession is always in a state of evolving change. Um, the main areas that you probably already know about are life, non-life, which in America is called property and casualty, and in this country it's called general, <coughs> um, investment and pensions. And to that now, we've got um, risk added. Um, there are quite a few academics, um, and a, a more actors also in corporate roles. Um, Another um, major force for change has been a massive growth of the accountancy firms. So what they do is they recruit actuaries for multidisciplinary teams. So you go in, you qualify up as an actuary, and then you're doing the same work as accountants. The advantage of going through the actuarial route is that you get there quicker. But once you're there, then you're fighting on an even level with the accountants. So the partners in an accountancy firm this will be measured more by how much business they bring in than their technical ability. I'm deliberately not going to give you any information on the salary levels that actuaries earn except to say that they are very nice. <laughs> um, you can think of it, if you like, if you look at what you're earning as um, a part qualified, gross it up five over four, because you will get approximately one day a week study leave. And that's what you should be comparing with your colleagues in the banks, because, and also you should realise that you will probably work, be working, yes you might bitch that it's a long day, but you will be working a normal working day, whereas they will be working 25 hours a day and no weekends. Um, the actuarial lifestyle is a very nice life. Sorry, you're a qualified actor as well, or are you HR? No, no, thank you. You're HR. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, 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 we I can talk to Maybe I ought people. to tone down what I say to you with an HR person in the room. <laughs> okay. Um, another shift in where actors work is a lot of them are now going into investment banks. So because of the regulations that have been brought in, Product development actuaries used to work for the life offices or the consultancies. Now, a lot of them are being employed in the investment banks. I suspect that that is a trend that might reverse because the um, life offices are now trying to form their own mini investment banks. So that's why I say there's a lot going on. And what I would say is that actuaries are clever people. And they will always find something to do. Um, I know I've been at many conferences where people said, oh, actuarial dying. You know, don't need actuaries. And I've stood up and I've been the only one who says, oh, but I'm no different. When I speak to HR, they say if they have, if, that actuaries are addictive. If they have one, they need more. And then I said, I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. I've got a son who's going to do maths, and he's just um, graduated with a first from UC. And I said, and he'll become an actuary. But I'm sure you also disprove whatever your parents say. And the one thing he doesn't want to be is an actuary because his mummy was or is. <laughs> okay? So there is more to life than being an actuary. So don't worry if you come out of the degree with less than a first or a two one, what it has shown you is you probably aren't suited to an actuarial career, but the actual training you've got is brilliant and will allow you to take up jobs in, you know, the accountancy firms, in investment banks, and you may even in the long run outperform your actuarial colleagues in the salary stakes. <laughs> 